So the, the problem was to make this uh, draw a table of financial data. So let's do that really quick. I think hopefully can just quickly. So I'll make a new folder. We'll call it historical uh, table. And new file name. Package name. <coughs> We're going to open our file. Data, common separated, new lines for each record. Um, so we're going to open that table.csv. I'm just going to pan from there. And then we're going to make a new reader, CSV reader. Um, and then we're going to loop for each one. We can just do read all, so we'll just do that. Okay. So we can loop over records. Uh, record. I'm going to call it row. And then, so the, the problem didn't say we actually had to do anything. So you could take each row and make it struct or not, uh, up to you. Um, so if we wanted to do that, we could say record struct, and you could have date, string. Um, I think it's open. And it's say 1264. I'll, I won't show the others, but this is the idea. You'd have high, low, close, etc. You would normally, of course, you pull this out and make it up here. But just notice you can put it in there if you want. Um, okay, and now we want to convert it. And so I think we should have a separate function for that. So called make record. And you give it a slice of string and it returns a record. And so the slice of string will be the row. And so got to convert it. So we can say um, open the parse loop, give it row 1, row at 1, and uh, 64. And that gives us that open value. Okay, so now we have a record. So we just say record, make record, give it the row. So at this point, maybe we should print it out to make sure we're doing the right thing. So theoretically, we should see a nice struct. So go install and call historical table. And that looks good, right? So we get one for each uh, row in the, in the CSV file. Notice the first one has date zero. So there's there's an interesting thing. Can you scratch that over, please? Did this? Oh. I'm going to erase everything in there. It, it has uh, the headers of the first row, because they're the first row in the file, so we probably want to skip those. So we can use continue. So we're going to skip the first row. Now if I run that. Now it's gone, so that's good. We're skipping the first row because it's just headers. Okay, so now we need to dump this as a table. So before our table, we need to write uh, our the, sort of the top part of our HTML document, right? So um, and we'll have a table tag. Now we can do it this way: t head, tr, 
th date th open and then oops close to your head and then t body and then we'll, we'll stop printing here and so we'll print out like the top part of our page and then we're going to do all our looping and then we'll print out the bottom part of the page. So to print out the bottom part, we'll go over here at the end and print. Um, and so we'll have closed T body and closed table and closed body. Okay? And then in here, instead of just printing the record, we're going to print TR and then TD. Another TD for the open, and so there we have to uh, either do like sprint f, uh, and we can say percent zero point two f or whatever, point two f, and give it the record dot open. That way to format it as a string. Okay, and then close our row, and this should theoretically. HTML. That looks like HTML. Let's make sure it looks right in the browser. Just say table.html and then open that. Cool. So there's our HTML table of data. Can you scratch that over too, please? Did anybody do the uh, making a line chart? I don't think so. So we can do that together. This actually has nothing to do with Go. But <laughs> you can learn some uh, tricks of, of uh, web development here. So we need a library to draw line charts. You could draw a line chart manually. Does anybody know what you would use to do that? Canvas. Canvas, which is too much for us to cover. Uh, so there's a nice library called Pie Charts. Let's try that. So how did I find this? Well, I just kind of knew, but you can Google around for charting libraries. And these look nice. Basic line chart. That's cool. So they have this edit and JS fiddle. And they show you how to draw a line chart. Okay? The series name and the data. So I think that we could, if we could, get those numbers into this list, we can draw that chart, okay? So what's the website you uh, were at just before this? High charts. High charts. Cool. And so I'm saying that if we dump the data so it looked like this inside a big, huge block of script, we could end up with a chart. So we need two things. We need jQuery and we need this high charts library. So jQuery, you can get from a CDN. A CDN is a content distribution network. So instead of downloading jQuery ourselves and having to include it on our script, we can, um, where do they put the CDN links? Use a CDN link. Here we go. So you can put this on the page. And now you'll have jQuery available. So let's let's make sure that worked. So I, I re-ran it and now I'm just gonna refresh. And to prove that I have jQuery, is this file not found? Oh. Do dollar, uh, dollar dot, whatever. It, it's working. Uh, jQuery, everything's on that dollar. And, and there's a jQuery object. Okay, jQuery doesn't come with your browser, so you have to have it as a script. All right, so now we have jQuery, and high charge depends on jQuery. So then we go over here and see what it did. It includes high charts this way. 
So we can copy that link, paste that right below this one, and then copy this one too. Just paste that. So now I'm including this high charts library. Okay. And then they have this container. So I'm just going to copy that guy. This is a block of HTML. Okay. And then I'm just going to copy this, this uh, JavaScript bit here. And I'm going to put at as a script in the bottom of the page. It could be in the header too, it doesn't matter. I'm going to just paste their code in here. Okay. So what I expect this to do is it's going to show that line chart that we saw over there, and then it's going to show my table I did. Okay. And I just want to make sure that that's working, we can see a line chart. And then I'm going to change the line chart so that it shows our data. There's a line chart, right? All I did was copy that from the JS bin. Um, just paste it in drum code. And now I'm going to change the series so that it matches, right? So it has all this other stuff, um, but I'm just going to change this bit here. All right. So the trick is I have to produce a comma separated value list of numbers, like one, two, three, four, five. Okay. I have to make that in order for this to work. So if I do that right now, um, right, that makes sense, right? One, two, three, four, five. Um, so how do I do that? I do it inside of here. So I can say, uh, we'll just call it open values, and it's going to be a string. Though actually, I'll do it as a slice of string. And then inside of our loop, I'll say that values equal append open values. And I'm going to get this guy. So what I'm doing is making a list of all of the open values as strings. Okay. And then down here, I'm going to replace this bit of code with a function from strings, strings.join which takes a list of strings and makes one string with the character joining them all. So I can take my open values, give it the string comma, and that should make all the numbers joined together with the comma put at this place inside of the HTML. All right? Let's see if this works. And there's our chart. See? Surprisingly easy, right? If we view page source, we have our table. A lot of rows in that table. Wow. Is that like open values for it? It's just one stock. So it took each one and put a comma between them all. So it just so happens the format of JSON is such that that works. Okay. Number, comma, number, comma, number. Um, all right. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just love it. Uh, yeah, those are probably wrong. I don't no, know. No big deal. That's totally awesome. Yeah, you, you'd have to fix that. But. Uh, can you scratch that up too, yeah. please? Yeah. <laughs> right. I, yeah, just, just keep in mind, we're talking, I added maybe 10 lines of code to that, right? It seems like it should be a huge endeavor to do that, but it's actually not that much work. Right? And the trick is to use libraries. <laughs> High charts is the name of the library. You guys probably saw jQuery before, right? Yeah. Okay. There was a whole philosophy discussion about whether we should take jQuery or not. So. Where's, where's the line of code that you said was showing the trick? Or the couple of lines? These lines right here? So these include the libraries. This is the thing that's getting drawn with the line chart. This whole bit I just copied from their example. And all I did was change the data to be our data. Okay, so this joins a list of items together. So, okay. question. So all you did is like define the variable open values as a string. 
slice of empty string. Yeah, you can do make or you can do it this way, and this is just empty. Okay. This is just a little shorter, that's all. And then I append to it the exact same thing I'm putting in the table. Okay. Uh, now you could do this with JavaScript too. Instead of uh it'll take forever. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna show it, but instead of doing this, you could use the DOM, go to that column, pull out the value of each one, convert it to a floating point number, and then put it into the data. Um, but this seems like it'd be much faster because you're not touching the DOM. Uh it, you know, know. Who, who knows? Uh the difference is it, the advantage of doing it that way is it if you change the table, it would automatically change the chart. This way we have to keep things in sync. Mm -hmm. But I mean it doesn't really matter. But it's shorter. Huh? But it's shorter. Yeah. What would actually be more typical uh, is instead of dumping the HTML like this, we'd have a static piece of HTML mm -hmm. that would have a script that would call an API that we made to go. That API would return this data as a JSON object. Mm -hmm. And then it would draw both the table and the chart in JavaScript instead of us drawing the table and JavaScript drawing the chart. Okay. That would be more common. But there's lots of ways to do this. Um, so theoretically, we could even uh, not use JavaScript at all, render the chart as an image on the server, and then use an image tag and just draw it as an image. Okay. But that's not going to be the same. Well, it would it would be lacking. Exactly. You, you would, it wouldn't be so, like, you wouldn't have this ability. Because right. that's JavaScript. You can't do that with just an image. And, uh, yeah. That's pretty sweet. Okay. So, that's good. Maybe we take a break.